Well, hello patrons, and welcome to the August uh, rewards video from me, Mike Bellevue, Duelist1954, and usually just Duelist people call me. So, instead of a gun video today, I'm going to talk about something else, and I hope you'll enjoy it, because even though guns are the stars of my video, and there's no doubt about that, the other thing that gets the most comments are the hats I wear. And I do make an effort to wear hats that are appropriate to whatever gun I'm shooting in the video. And uh, a lot of people seem to appreciate that. So I'm going to run you through the hats that have appeared in the videos. And uh, I'll tell you what I know about them. I mean, a lot of them I've had for 20 years or 30 years. So I really can't remember where I got them or who made them in some cases, but I'll tell you when I do know. Uh, now, just just to kind of organize them, I'll do them by historical period. I mean, that seems to be probably the smartest way to go. So we'll start off with the 18th century hats from America's colonial era. Well, the chapeau is probably my best colonial tricorn hat. And uh, this was made by a custom hat maker named Lil Grizz. And honestly, that's the only name I know him by. And he's an itinerant hat maker. He goes around to a lot of events and he makes hats right out of his tent uh, at rendezvous or, or large cowboy action shooting events. And he's made me a couple of hats. And uh, this one is one of my favorites. This is my favorite colonial tricorn type hat. And this one is also a colonial tricorn. It has a different profile. And this is one that I made myself from, uh, from just an old broad brim felt hat. So it's another civilian colonial tricorn. It's appeared in a number of my videos. This is what was called a round hat because the brim is round. Uh, this is actually a hat that was popular, especially with light infantry troops during the uh, French and Indian War. Uh, which was the American portion of the Seven Years' War. And basically, because the woods are so dense in America, uh, troops took their tricorn hats and they cut them down to these very small brims, just uh, two inches. And they usually tacked up the back, which that way they couldn't knock them off if they sat up against something. And this gave them just enough sun protection and enough rain protection, but they were less likely to get knocked off by brush or branches. And this, this was quite popular with light troops uh, during the Seven Years' War and became popular with civilians. All right, and my final 18th century hat. Uh, this is your basic woodsman's hat. This is another round hat, slouch hat. Uh, this style was popular in America for 200 years, really. And it's also made by Lil Grizz, the custom hat maker. And uh, like the other round hat you saw, this one has kind of a cut down brim. This one's three inches. And it's very heavy beaver felt. Uh, I like this one because I think the three inch brim gives you more protection from the rain and the sun. And it still is out of the way in the brush. And this is my favorite event or trekking and camping hat. I wear this one a lot. Well, leaving the 18th century behind and coming into the 19th century, this is the hat I use for early 19th century impressions like um, like the Mountain Men, the fur trade era. So it's another it's another round hat, full size brim. This one's about a four and a half inch brim, very stiff. Uh, when when Stetson copied this hat for his original famous hat, uh, it became known as the Boss of the Plains style, and it's a great hat. You can use it for cowboy era or earlier. When I first got into cowboy action shooting around 1995, this was the first hat I bought. This is made by the Stetson Company and it's called the Stallion. Uh, and it's kind of a towny gambler sort of hat uh, that I thought was kind of cool looking. So this is what I started off with. I got this next hat around 96 or 97, and uh, I can't even tell you who made it um, or where I got it, but 
this hat was the hat that I wore the most often for years. And I don't know if it'll show up on here, if you can see all the dirt and smudges. And a lot of these are from black powder cartridges landing on the brim from rifle fire and being caught. But I've worn this in wind and rain, I've sweated through it. Uh, it's an incredibly comfortable hat and it's just been a very good companion for 20 years now. When I went to my first SAS convention, which I guess was around the year 2000, uh, maybe 2001, just a long time ago, I needed a hat that was cowboy but looked a little more formal. So I had this made for me by the Beaver Hat Company. Uh, it, it's 10x beaver fur and you'll have seen it in a number of videos this year um, I didn't used to wear it in the field at all I used to just wear this like to more dress up events with a frock coat and that sort of thing but mm, lately I've dressed up for a few videos and this hat has gone with it so you've you will have seen this in several videos over the last year and it's it's another great hat like I say it's Probably been 16 or 17 years of sitting on my head. When the movie Appaloosa came out, I really liked the hat that uh, Viggo Morganston wore uh, when he played Everett Hitch. And I had the, uh, the D Bar J Hat Company in Las Vegas make a copy of it for me, which is this. And it's a pretty neat hat. I mean, it's got about a five inch brim. Uh, it's definitely makes a statement. Um, I use this a lot with with Southern, uh, you know, Rebel uh, cap and ball revolvers because it kind of looks Southern plantation-y to me. Uh, so I don't wear it all that much, uh, but it's a cool hat. Occasionally you want something a little more towny and a little less formal. And uh, this derby does a trick. I don't wear it too often. In fact, I can't remember if I've ever worn it in a video. Though I might have. But uh, I've got one for the few times I need it. And this is the last of my western hats. This is another hat custom made by Lil Grizz. And uh, it's, it's another 10x beaver fur hat. Uh, this has fast become my favorite cowboy hat. It's roomy. I shaped the brim myself and put a little simple hat band on it. And uh, it keeps the sun off, it keeps the rain off, it's got a great shape, a great look. And I've been wearing this a lot out in the field lately. So for early 20th century portrayals, I like my US Army campaign hat. And this is an original. Now, you know, civilian hats were made very similar. This is called a Montana Peak. It was a, a popular style in the 1890s and so the military adopted it. But uh, this is an original I picked up in an antique store. It's fun for wild bunch shooting and, you know, for any early 20th century field wear. Well, if you're a longtime fan of the channel, you know that I also have a collection of international hats that I wear in some of my videos. So, we'll run you through those now. The first one is my British pith helmet. And I usually do this for 19th century stuff or double rifles or anything, you know, safari related. Uh, it's really not all that comfortable. I mean, does it is, you know, it's cooler than a felt hat, but the, the old style pith helmets are pretty easy to knock off. So anyway, that's the British one. All right, so this is the German World War II era uh, peaked army hat. And uh, I've got a couple of videos that this appears in. And this little number, which is pretty, pretty simple, is the Italian army's peaked hat. And I've got a fair number of fans in Poland, and uh, this is my Polish army hat. Uh, and, and I've done a number of Polish service pistols, and I've worn this hat for those videos. Now, this might be my coolest uh, Cold War era 
hat. This is a Soviet naval cap. And uh, as, as a lot of you know, I used to work for the U.S. Navy and I was the deputy director for uh, maritime you know, ships and submarines uh, logistics supply uh, for a number of years. So I was in charge of keeping our, our ships at sea supplied with all the many things they needed. And early in my career, of course, the Soviets were our enemies. And I know that we have a number of fans of the channel in the Soviet Union, and I'm happy to have you. Uh, but, of course, in the early days, right, we were all trying to get one up on each other. That was, that was our job during the Cold War. And I, I like this hat because it reminds me of my counterparts in the Soviet Navy. And the final hat for the collection is my French Foreign Legion Kepi. And uh, of course I'm of French ancestry, though my family has been in North America since about 1640, so been an awful long time since any Bellevue blood touched Europe. But uh, I got a soft spot in my heart for France. And who doesn't love the French Foreign Legion, right? So this is, this is a paratroop uh, kepi, and I've used it in a couple of videos uh, with the 1935 French pistol, uh, the MAS pistol. So that concludes our show on my hats, and I hope you got a kick out of them, and I hope you'll watch more of my shooting videos on the Duelist 1954 channel on YouTube or on the Duelist channel on full30.com and thanks a lot for all your support